In this video, let's work to get a little more practice with uh, the concepts of sufficient statistics, complete statistics, and uh, the uniform minimum variance unbiased estimator. So here we'll have uh, some data that are IID from a uniform zero theta. And we'd like to show uh, first that this distribution, the uniform zero theta, is not a member of the exponential family. So that means we can't really use the uh, result that we had from a previous video, which says if you do have a distribution from the exponential family, then you can easily read off a sufficient and complete statistic. So it won't be the case that we can do that here for the uniform zero theta distribution, as we'll show, but we might have some other options. So once we do that, we'll then show that the max value of the sample is a sufficient statistic for theta and also a complete statistic for the uniform zero theta distribution. And then from there, we'll easily be able to find the uniform minimum variance unbiased estimator by just trying to find an, a function of the max that's unbiased. Right? We had a theorem that told us if we have a sufficient and complete statistic, then there will be a unique unbiased estimator that's a function of that sufficient and complete statistic, and that will be uh, this best estimator. So for one, let's start by just writing down the joint distribution. So the joint distribution for the sample will be theta to the negative n times the product of some indicators, right? Product from i equals 1 up to n of indicator over 0 theta uh, xi. Now we've seen this before. We can rewrite this as theta to the negative n, and we can rewrite that product as an indicator on 0 theta of the max value of the sample. And the reason why this is true is because if all of the values in the sample are less than theta, then it must be the case that the max value is less than theta. If the max is less than theta, then all of them will be. So we can replace this product by just a single indicator function um, telling us you know, where uh, the data must fall. It's where the max must be below theta. Now, if you remember what it means to be from the exponential family, we should be able to split apart um, functions of the data and functions of theta. And there's no way to really do that, right? This indicator is at once a function of theta and a function of the data in the form of the max value. And it won't be possible to tease these you know, apart. Well, we could set aside this here as a function of theta, but we would never tease apart this indicator function. And if you look at the form of the exponential family, we can go back and do that. Here's the form of the exponential family. We have this problem where we can't uh, you know, tease apart something like a function of theta and a function of the data in these two different ways. They're always intertwined. And so that tells us that this distribution, uniform zero theta, is not a member of the exponential family of distributions. So the fact that the uniform zero theta distribution is not a member of the exponential family means that we can't use the theorem here on the previous slide that tells us that if we do have a sample from the exponential family, then the d of x that shows up in the definition of the exponential family is complete and sufficient. So we don't have this to work from. So we'd have to find a complete and sufficient statistic in another way. And we can in fact do that. So the second piece here is to show that um, the max value is both sufficient and complete. So again, if we have the joint distribution We'll write it in terms of just the single indicator. So this form of the distribution 
makes it clear that we can factor uh, this distribution in the way that we need to uh, in the theorem about sufficient statistics. So we saw that if we could factor the data into a function of just the data, so h of x, times a function g, where the data only enter in terms of the sufficient statistic, and that can also contain the parameter theta, then we have, we have this as our sufficient statistic. So it turns out that it's already in that form. This function is sort of trivially 1, and then this g here is just the entire function, right? This entire function contains thetas. That's fine. That's allowed according to this theorem. And it also contains the data only uh, entering as a sufficient statistic, right? The only place the data shows up is in this uh, max value. So this implies that the max value is sufficient Uh, for theta. Now in order to show the max is complete, we have to show that uh, if there is a g such that the expected value of g of t is equal to zero, then g of t is equal to 0 for all theta. Now this for all theta shows up here, right? There's a, there will be a theta in this integral, and it should be true for any value, you know, any legal value of theta. And what we're really showing here is that we can take a function of our statistic so here we're saying, you know, our t is a function of x, and it's actually the max value. So we want to say we want to start out with the expectation of a function of the sufficient statistic being equal to zero, and then showing that actually that function of the sufficient statistic itself must be zero for all theta. And really, this could be uh, zero almost surely, which means that the probability that this is equal to zero is equal to one. But we'll, we're just going to show that uh, g of t actually must be equal to zero um, always, and so it is with probability one. Now, in order to do that, Let's note that the PDF of the max, we'll make it a function of t, um, is equal to theta to the negative n times n times t to the n minus 1, and indicator from 0 to theta. And the reason why we're noting this is because we're going to start out with this expected value calculation. And we'll use the law of the unconscious statistician to get this. This will be a function of t, where t is our sufficient statistic. So the law of the unconscious statistician says we can use the PDF of t, the max value, and multiply by uh, you know, that function of t. So if this expected value is equal to zero, we can differentiate both sides and not change anything. So part of the technique of what we're doing here is we will differentiate both sides. That won't change anything. And the derivative of zero is equal to zero, right? It's a constant. So derivative of zero is zero. Here we'll have the derivative of theta sorry, derivative of the expected value of g of t with respect to theta. 
So this will be the derivative with respect to theta of the integral from zero to theta of g of t times theta to the negative n times n times t to the n minus one integral with respect to t, right? So all we've done is use the law of the unconscious statistician, expected value uh, of g of t will be the integral from zero to theta of g of t times this here, which is the PDF of the max. Now in order to take this derivative, um, we will split this into two different functions, that are two different factors basically, and we'll use the product rule. And we'll do this sort of strategically. If we take this to be, say, our function one, think of the product rule, you're multiplying two things together. Um, that's one function of theta. And this g of t times n uh, times t to the n minus one, this will be another second function, and we'll use the product rule where we're multiplying you know, the green and the yellow. So we'll have yellow is one, green is two. So the product rule says, well, take the first function, so theta to the negative n, times the derivative of the second. So derivative of the second is the derivative of an integral. So the integral from zero to theta of g of t times n times t to the n minus one dt. Now the second will be um, the second function times the derivative of the first function. So I'll write down the derivative of the first function here. And then the second is the integral from zero to theta of g of t times n times t to the n minus one dt. Now here you might wonder, can we take our derivative and pull it inside of the integral? And the answer to that is no, because of regularity conditions. Regularity conditions tell us we can only swap the derivative and the integral if the support of the distribution does not depend on, uh, on the parameter theta. This distribution, of course, the support of the distribution does depend on theta. But what we can do for this first integral is use the fundamental theorem of calculus, which says that the derivative of this integral is equal to the integrand with theta plugged in, in this case. So we'll have g of theta times n times theta to the n minus one. And then the second term, if you look here, you should notice that this is actually the expected value of g of t divided by theta to the negative n. Right, the difference between this integral here and the actual expected value of g of t is just this factor of theta to the negative n. And that doesn't you know, that could be inside of the integral or outside of the integral because it's an integral with respect to t, and so this is a constant. So this should hold, and we know by assumption that the expected value of g of t is equal to zero. So this whole term here is zero. So we're just left with theta to the negative n times g of theta times n times, well, theta to the n minus one, we can actually simplify this a little bit. We'll go back to here. This is just theta to the negative one times g of theta 
times n. So notice all of this, right, string of equalities, all of this is equal to zero. Now, if this is equal to zero, then that implies that one of these is equal to zero. Well, n is the sample size, it's not equal to zero. And theta is not equal to zero, so one over theta will not be equal to zero. So it must be the case that g of theta is equal to zero. And that's exactly what we needed to prove, right? We needed to show, to, in order to show that uh, the max value is complete, we needed to show that if the expected value of g of the sufficient statistic, uh, what we've shown to already be sufficient, if that's equal to zero, then g of t must be equal to zero, and that's for all values of theta, right, with respect to this integral. So we've shown that, all right, the expected value of g of t is equal to zero, implies that the derivative with respect to theta of the expected value of g of t is equal to zero. We did some calculus, and we showed, okay, that must mean that g of theta is equal to zero, and if we want to be even more you know, precise, we should say for all values of theta. So this implies that the max value is complete. Okay, so we've shown uh, uniform zero theta is not a member of the exponential family. We've shown that the max value is sufficient. We've shown it's complete. Now all we have to do is find the uniform minimum variance unbiased estimator of theta. This should be easy. Now, now that we've done all this work, this should be easy. Because the max value is both sufficient and complete, we know that there's uh, a, a unique unbiased estimator that's a function of the max value. And we've, we've shown this before. The expected value of n plus 1 over n times the max value is equal to theta, which means that this statistic here is the uniform minimum variance unbiased estimator of theta. Right, if this expected value, expected value of this here is equal to theta, that means this is an unbiased estimator. And since the max value is sufficient and complete, this is the unique function uh, of the max value that's unbiased for theta and that means it will be the uniform minimum variance unbiased estimator of theta.